Today, I have got a revolutionary book by Bill Gates himself. Hello, fellow plot quester designer and plot quester. And today, I have a book with no plot but with pretty important information. Bill Gates How to Avoid a Climate Disaster The Solutions We Have and the Breakthroughs We Need. And basically, I'm going to talk about what this book talks about in general and my opinions on Bill Gates' opinions. And yeah, let's have some fun with some good old information. So, Bill Gates brings up several points, but it can be pretty much boiled down to this. Poor countries will be hit the hardest. We need people, private investors, to invest in new technologies, and a lot of new technologies need to be made, namely a lot, namely technologies such as storing energy and such, which I will discuss later. And then, finally, the government needs to do some proper policies that can help boost these effects of what we can do to combat climate change. And then, like, what we can do as citizens and stuff, but that comes later. So first off, whoa, poor countries will be hit the hardest. Yeah, a lot of people think, yo, um, the rich countries are using, using a lot of energy and stuff, so I bet the rich countries are the ones who need to deal with this climate change thing. That's not true, because the thing is, when climate change goes nuts, and the water levels go up, for example, it is the countries that don't have enough precautions and technology to combat such disasters are the ones who are going to be hit the hardest. And that's why we need to be focusing on these people. And yes, we need to deliver electricity, cheap electricity, and other mo modern appliances to these people. However, we need to make sure that they are eco-friendly. Because what's the point if we are giving them energy and technology that's going to last them on let's say three decades and then because of the uh, green energy or the greenhouse gases that are produced by those appliances there's a huge disaster upon the planet and everyone in that area dies well that seems counterproductive right and that's why we kind of need to think about creating cheap really cheap reliable and green energy now, however, clean energy is pretty difficult to make. Now, there's of course the problem of the fact that, well, it's just difficult to make. Like, for example, let's say hydropower, wind power, solar power, all is really dependent on, on different kinds of things. And especially there's a lot of drawbacks. For example, hydropower. Let's say we make a dam and then a river dries up. What if beneath the river, there's a huge amount of greenhouse gases buried, and now because there's no water, the greenhouse gases go up. That will be counterproductive. That's making things worse, not better. So we need to think about renewable energies that are storable, and renewable energies that are just better in general. Because let's say, for example, solar power, or let's say hydropower. Hydropower is producing, let's say, 100% of energy. But this country, I don't remember what country it was, but let's say there's this country, and only uses 70% of the energy. Where's the 30% going? To the sky? No, we aren't using any of it. None of it is being used. And th that's just wasteful. If we can somehow store that 30% of energy, then it might be better if we can use that 30% later. And that kind of batteries is what we need, except we don't have any. Or they exist, but they're way too expensive to actually use. And a lot, and another thing is, is that um, energy such as this, or biofuel energy, or greenhouse energy, or I mean, clean energy, eco-friendly energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, all these technologies are really, really kind of dangerous, kind of dangerous to put their money in because. The thing is, for private investors, they want money. That's that's the point. They 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 want money, and that's why they're that's why they're called investors. They invest money to get a profit. And the thing is, a lot of people are afraid because a lot of these green green energy technologies are within the grasp of what's what Bill Gates likes to call the value of debt, where a lot of good ideas are killed because they're improbable. They need a lot of funding and. They're just too dangerous to carry out. As in dangerous as in like money-wise, not you know, like exploding the planet wise. And the thing is, a lot of things that Bill Gates thinks may what Bill Gates says in order to counter this is that um basically 
the next couple decades is going to be focused on these green energies. And if if all of these all of these private investors make make these huge breakthroughs, that helps the world, but also it can bring a lot of profit back to them. Because from now on, a lot of greenhouse energy and all of this greenhouse energy. What am I saying? No, a lot of this, a lot of the economy from now on is going to be based on who has access to these powerful green, clean energy. And greenhouse free energy and if these private investors can invest right now and have great breakthroughs then they're obviously gonna have huge amount of profits like huge amounts of profits and that's what Bill Gates is kind of saying like you guys need to invest because it's gonna help you in the long run or if you guys make major breakthroughs even if you have some loss it'll cover for you later on and also it'll just help the world in general you know you guys have millions of dollars and, and what Bill Gates uh, likes to emphasize in this book is what's called a green premium. And the green premium, premium is basically this. Let's say there's a biofuel gasoline, and let's say there's gasoline. Let's say a gallon of gasoline is $2. Let's say biofuel gasoline is $6. Then there's a $4 difference between those two things, right? And that's the green premium. It's the, it's the, it's the difference between a eco-friendly version of the product and basically you know the original product is going to be cheaper but the green premium version is going to be more expensive but better for the environment and that's basically what we're trying to say and Bill Gates's point is that we need to bring down the green premium to the bare minimum for us to reach zero and he, re he emphasizes the word zero we need to reach climate zero not 10% not 20%, not 5%, zero. Because if we don't aim for zero, well, we're kind of screwed. And he emphasizes this point again and again. And again, after he rambles on about how a lot of companies need to invest on these different technologies, like for example, the one about batteries that I mentioned, he also talks about how government needs to directly invest and also make these different policies that can help boost these companies and make sure that they can actually have room to work. Because the thing is, a lot of, you, a lot of people might think right at this moment, like, government? What are they going to do? Make a new law? I mean, if we're cold capitalists in this world. Who's going to listen to a law that might not even profit them? Like, what's happening? Well, let's think about this a little bit. Government policy has already done worldwide difference making. Like, for example, in the US, rural electricity? Think about it. Is there a place in the US where electricity doesn't exist? Well, no, because governments in the US have made laws and policies so that electricity can reach every little fingertip of the US. Well, that people live in anyway. And we've done that before. Why can't we do that for green energy? And the, well, the main problem, of course, is the fact that green energy might not be as, you know, money and profitable and easy as it is. However, when, when we think about it, it's almost as important as electricity or more, in fact, if they, things are really catastrophic. And the reason for this is simple, because we want to save the world from absolute destruction, and I kind of want to live. Yeah, that seems to be a pretty good reason. And basically, Bill Gates, what Bill Gates is saying is that if only the companies and the private investors are doing, doing their thing and trying to make sure that, make sure that there's new eco-friendly alternatives, well, they might not really do a great job. And... By that, I mean, sure, they'll make their stuff, but if governments don't put out regulations and policies that make sure that these products shine out to the public, nothing's gonna happen. Because the public, we, the consumers, and we are capitalists, after all, this is a capitalist society, we like money. And if it's cheaper, we go cheaper. And when it comes to these green premiums or these eco-friendly alternatives, it might not 
be cheaper or better. I mean, it's better, but not in like the consumer way, as in better for the world way. So what I'm saying is that if governments can back these con- companies up with like really good policies, for example, hey, if you if you use biofuel, you get like a reduction on taxes. I know this is a really random example that I just thought of, but something like that, a policy that boosts eco-friendly alternatives over non-eco-friendly alternatives. That's the kind of policies that needs to be made. And to summarize so far, Bill Gates is saying, number one, we need to make a lot of breakthroughs in order to make clean, cheap, reliable energy because the poor is going to be hit the weakest. Number two, obviously making clean energy is really, really difficult. A lot of technologies need to be made and for that we need money. And private investors should invest and give that money to companies who can or has the potential to make all of these different technologies. They need to invest because in the long run, since the world needs these green energy appliances and these beautiful green premiums, they, if they make good breakthroughs through their investments, they'll be billionaires. So it, there's something in it for them. And finally, in order to boost these products to the public, the government policymakers need to do their sh- I mean, they need to work properly. And they need to make policies that boost green premiums over not green premiums, as in, you know, stuff that's destroying our world. Makes sense. And finally, it, it talks a little bit about what we can do, but basically, from what I understand, he doesn't expect us, like, like we can't do, we can do a lot, like, sure, we can, we can eat less meat, or we can, we can drive a car less. That's a difference. We are making a difference, and we can make a difference if, well, we can use social media or whatever, but the fundamental difference needs to be made in the products themselves. We need to make a world where even if we eat meat, we'll be fine. It doesn't affect the environment. We need to make a world even if we drive cars, the, dry, the cars don't affect the environment negatively. We need to make, what Bill Gates is saying is that there needs to be a fundamental difference on what is happening around us and the products that we're using rather than making us stop using the product. For example, it'd be ridiculous if you guys made us like, you know, stop using electricity for a month. That would be a disaster. All my ice cream would melt. And what's that saying is that there needs to be a difference or a change in the technology that we use, not, you know, making us stop use the technology. Like, for example, if electricity kills people, we come up with stuff that makes sure that electricity doesn't kill people, not, you know, stop using electricity altogether. Same thing with green energy. And that's pretty much all of Bill Gates' opinions. And in my opinion, that's a perfectly logical and sound um, argument. Because now, let's think about it. There's the imminent death ahead of us in the next couple centuries if you continue on to road of destruction and famine that we're on right now and if we put through i mean like seriously i've read a lot of green energy like articles and like whoa green peace and like what we are doing and what we can do oh stop using electricity oh oh put off lights when you leave the room like yeah sure what what kind of difference is that gonna make i know that that's not a great way of thinking when it comes to climate change But when you think about it, it's true. Like, it's not going to make a big difference unless the electricity you're using, for example, is coming from a pre-charged battery of solar energy. Or we have some kind of technology that we can pull in and out, pull electricity in and out of city. So in nighttime or daytime or whenever electricity is the busiest, we pull a lot in. And then when we don't need it, we stop logical it's logical and it makes sense because there's no point in trying to make us stop using all of these appliances that's impossible we've been given what's basically drugs that make our lives better we're not going to give that up but if we make sure that those drugs don't harm the world around us then that's the way to go and that argument is super duper logical and makes sense and it, it was really interesting as well. Like, I, I, did, I had no idea about that hydropower drawback thing. Like, whoa. And I didn't know that when you cut down trees, you actually release the carbon dioxide and the stuff that they, that they 
brought in out into the world. Like, I didn't know all of these things. And I got to know all of those things. And with a really sound, logical argument, that really binds everything together. In other words, it was a really great book. And in my opinion, I mean, of course, I'm an avid reader of fantasy. Oh my god, fantasy is my favorite. Pretty easily. However, what I have to admit is that this book was like listening to a good debate or a good speech. It was a very fact-backed and fact-based and experience-based and logic-based. And that's the kind of argument I like. A clear consensus, a clear reason, and a and a understandable solution and conclusion that are both realistic, positive, but not overly optimistic. Because, come on, without the pessimists in this world, we would have died several times. Just saying. And, well, that's, that's what I think about this book. Definitely easily an 8 out of 10, even though I don't like this genre. Like, most people will give this a 10 out of 10, because it's well done. But like I said, I mean, I didn't enjoy, it didn't entertain me. It isn't supposed to. And on that regard, yeah, 8 out of 10 or 9 out of 10. Hmm, I might change my mind. Let's go with 8 for now. And that is what I think about the book. And that is my, that is the basic summary and everything what I, that I think about in this book. And honestly, guys, if you really want to make a difference, go ahead and succeed. Like, Make a business, become a millionaire, become a billionaire, become a best-selling author, become a singer, an idol, make a lot of money, and then when you have a lot of money, you can think of how you can start using that money to invest in that kind of stuff, is my opinion on things. Because if you want to make a difference, then the difference between a couple dozen millionaires and a couple dozen normal people with decent jobs that difference is quite substantial unfortunately and fortunately in this world and i think that the best way to do for a lot of teens like myself right now is to have interest and be aware of these situations around this number one number two when we can try to make at least a small difference because that's logical right i mean well, what else can we do? And third, focus on your dreams and do the best things that you can and become a millionaire and become like him and actually make a lasting difference. And that's my opinion on the issue itself. And yeah, climate change. Whoa, we're all gonna die. And honestly speaking, I think a lot of us have been kind of bamboozled or bedazzled by the amount of I mean, sure, a lot of public education systems talk about climate change. Like, yeah, climate change is important. Duh, oh, we're all going to die. Yeah, sure. I've heard that a million times before. Like, seriously. If you want to make sure that we understand what's actually going on and that there is an actual change that we can make, then you got to teach us about that kind of stuff, man. Not, oh, climate change. We're all going to die. Oh, you should stop taking long showers and stop... uh turning on lights that's a good idea and uh, yeah we're, we're all gonna die but it's okay because scientists are doing their thing like hello like we need to know about these things and that's why I think the book's excellent again and again I'm saying it. and that's pretty much it and like always your plot quester and the plot quester like I said either become millionaires and try to help invest in that kind of technology that Bill Gates is talking about or just be aware of this and when there is a difference or, or policymakers actually make biofuels an option or these technologies become apparent in the world, try to use them. Like, seriously, it's like a couple extra dollars usually. Like, try to use them. Be, be a good person. I mean, I don't think you want your, like, kids to die. Like, I don't either. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, have a great day and good bye. Let's try to avoid a climate disaster if possible, you know. That seems to be a good idea. Yep. Bye. Thank you.